Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to talk about the addition property of equality. So in this video, we're going to talk about checking the solution to an equation by using substitution, solve an equation using the addition property of equality, and also solve the equation using the subtraction property of equality. And so number two and three are very similar. So in this section, we're going to start off our discussion on solving linear equations in one variable. using the addition property of equality and be able to figure out what that means when you actually solve an equation. So the definition, a linear equation in one variable, what does that actually mean? Because we're going to be solving different types of equations in this class. What does it mean that you're solving a linear equation in one variable? A linear equation in one variable is where you have an equation of this form. A is just a real number b is just a real number, and c is just a real number. So you have some number times x plus some other number, real number, and it equals a real number. So notice that the x is being raised to the first power. There's no exponent on the x, so it's assumed to be a 1. And so x is raised to the first power, and all the other terms are real numbers. This is called a linear equation. And so the only restriction is that a cannot be 0. If a was equal to 0, you would have 0 times x, which is 0, which means you don't have a variable at all. So a cannot be 0 to have an equation. Okay, What does it mean to have a solution to an equation? So a solution for an equation is a number, or a real number, that's being used in the place of the variable so that the equation makes a true statement. So if you come up with a true statement, Whenever you plug in an x value or whatever value that you're plugging into the variable, if it makes it a true statement, that is a solution to the equation. And the set of all solutions to an equation is called the solution set for the equation. And so if it's a set, we'll use curly brackets. So for example, the equation x plus 2 equals 5 is saying, what is the number that you need to add 2 to to get 5? Well, the solution has to be 3, because 3 plus 2 is 5. So the solution set is the set, so curly brackets for set notation, 3. So x equals 3 is making the equation a true statement. You get 3 plus 2 equals 5. What's so important about linear equations in one variable is that you will have exactly one solution. No solution or all real numbers. Those are the only possibilities for a linear equation solution. So you have one solution, just like we had here, x plus 2 equals 5, there's only one solution, x equals 3. You could have no solution for some types of equations, and you might have all real numbers as other types of equations. So example one, determining whether a solution is satisfying the equation. So determine whether x equals 5 is a solution to this linear equation, 2x minus 3 equals 7. So notice that x is raised to the first power, so that's why it's a linear equation. If you want to check whether it's a solution or not, substitute x equals 5 into the equation. Two x minus 3 equals 7. So just like we did with x plus 2 equals 5, we replaced the x with the solution, and it should make it a true statement. So if this is a true statement, then x equals 5 is a solution. So let's try to find out. 2x minus 3 equals 7. This implies, so that's the notation for implies. You replace the x with a 5. So 2 times 5 is what we're going to check. Minus 3 equals 7. Some people like to put a little question mark above the equals because we don't know if it's equal yet. So we have to check out what is the left side if you simplify. Is it 7 or is it something else? So this implies, again, 2 times 5 is 10, minus 3 equals 7. And so this is a true statement. 10 minus 3 is equal to 7. So check mark, it works. So this means x equals 5 is a solution. to the equation 
2x minus 3 equals 7. Okay, number 2. Again, determining whether a solution for a given equation, determine whether x equals negative 2 is the solution to a linear equation. 8 equals 3x plus 4. So again, if we want to find out if it's a solution or not, substitute the value x equals negative 2 into the equation. Eight equals three x plus four. Okay, so let's start off with the equation. Eight equals three x plus four implies take the x and replace it with negative two in parentheses. So eight equals or does it equal, so a little question mark, three times negative two plus four. So the left side stays eight. And the right side is 3 times negative 2 is negative 6 plus 4. The right side gives us negative 6 plus 4. That's negative 2. So 8 equals negative 2. That's a false statement. That does not work. So that means x equals negative 2 is not the solution to the equation. The only way that you have a solution is if you substitute in the value for the variable and it's a true statement. So if you come up with a false statement like 8 equals negative 2, then x equals negative 2 in this case was not a solution. And so the note at the bottom is saying you use a question mark over the equal sign like we did in the last couple examples to show that you don't yet know whether the left side is equal to the right side of the equation. So if you say they're equal, they're equal. If you put a little question mark above it, it indicates that you're not quite sure yet. Okay, the important thing to know about an equation is the solution set, as we're gonna find out later in the class. So we need to make the following definition to be able to classify all equations that have the same solution set. So the definition is equivalent equations. Two or more equations with the same solution set, in other words, they have the same answers, same solutions, are called equivalent equations. So equivalent equations may look different, but they will always have the same solution. And this is the basis for actually solving equations. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other. Well, that step of making sure that the left side and the right side of the equations are still equal is called an equivalent equation. So you want to make sure that you have equivalent equations from step one to step two to step three and so on so that your answer at the end will still be the answer for the original equation you started with. So these are the basis for solving equations. The addition and subtraction properties of equality. So if two numbers are equal and we increase or decrease them both by the same amount, then the resulting numbers will also be the same or equal. So we can apply this idea when we are solving equations. So if we are adding or subtracting the same amount to both sides of the equation, then we are producing an equivalent equation, which means by the definition of the equivalent equation, they will have the same solution set as the original equation. So these are called the addition property of equality and the subtraction property of equality. So that what they state are the following. A, B, and C are just expressions, so they can have real numbers or variables or a combination of both. If A equals B, and you want to add to the left side of the equation, so if you add a, this expression C on the left side of the equation, you must do the same thing to the right side of the equation. So you have to add C with B to make sure that this is still a true statement. A plus C equals B plus C. So in other words, if you add the same quantity to both sides of the equation, the solution set will not change. So you'll have the same solution as the original equation. And the subtraction property says the exact same thing, except 
Instead of adding to both sides of the equation, you make sure that you subtract the same amount or same quantity to both sides of the equation. So if A equals B, I can subtract C on the left side of the equation, but I have to subtract C on the right side of the equation as well to make sure that I have an equivalent equation. So subtracting the same quantity on both sides of the equation, again, will not change the solution set, which is important. So example three, we're gonna start solving equations using these two properties. Example three says solve the following linear equations using the addition and subtraction properties of equality. So number one, x minus three equals 10. So let's copy the problem over. x minus three equals 10. I want to be able to isolate or get the variable term by itself on one side of the equation. So I want to be able to get x equals and then the solution. So to be able to do that, I need to add three to negative three, so I'll get x plus zero, which is just x. So add three to both sides of the equation. So this is using the addition property of equality. So I'm adding three to the left side of the equation and adding three to the right side of the equation. So now this means I have x on the left side because negative three plus three is zero. So I just have x by itself equals 13. And so this is called a solution to the equation. So now, how do you know if you actually have the correct answer? Well, we can do exactly like we did in examples one and two. We can check our answer by substituting x equals 13 back into the original equation to see if it actually is a true statement. So let's check. So x equals 13 is what we're going to check the solution as. And the equation was x minus 3 equals 10. The original equation. Always go back to the original equation. So now replace the x with a 13 in parentheses. Minus 3. Do I have it equal to 10? Let's find out. So 13 minus 3 is 10. This implies 10 equals 10. And that is correct. So x equals 13 is the solution because when you sub into the equation, it gives you a true statement. Okay, number two. This time you have a plus two-thirds equals negative one-sixth. So again, let's copy the problem down. a plus two-thirds equals negative one-sixth. So how do I get the variable by itself this time if I have a plus two-thirds on the left side of the equation? I want to make sure I have just a by itself if I want to solve an equation. So if I want to get the two-thirds moved to the other side of the equation, I need to subtract it. So this implies a plus two-thirds minus two-thirds. So this time we're using the subtraction property of equality by subtracting two-thirds on both sides of the equation. So this implies that a, because two-thirds minus two-thirds is zero, equals negative one-sixth minus two-thirds which, if you calculate this, this will come out to be negative 5 sixths. So that is the solution to the equation. And so now we can check the answer again, just like we did in the previous problem. So check that a equals negative 5 sixths is the correct answer to the equation a plus two-thirds equals negative one-sixth. Okay, so replace the a with negative five-sixths in parentheses, plus two-thirds, and question mark above equals, is it equal to negative one-sixth? The left side of the equation is negative five-sixths plus four-sixths, which gives you negative one-sixth. So negative one-sixth equals the right side of the equation, negative one-sixth, and that is a true statement. They're equal. So that means a equals negative five-sixths is the solution to the equation. Number three, you have negative two times the quantity, two x minus three, then subtract seven x outside the parentheses, and it equals negative three. So you have a negative two times a quantity with a, a difference on the inside of the parentheses. So we're going to use the distributive property here. So again, copy down the problem again, as it is. 
and now use the distributive property. Negative 2 times 2x and negative 2 times negative 3. So we'll have negative 2 times 2x and negative 2 times negative 3. My 7x is outside the parentheses, so you do not distribute to negative 7x. It just stays negative 7x equals negative 3. So we have to simplify the expression a little bit on the left side of the equals before we start solving the equation. So you have negative 2 times 2x. That is negative 4x. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. Minus 7x equals negative 3. So now notice on the left side of the equation, we have like terms. There's a negative 4x and a negative 7x. Those are like or similar terms. They can be combined. So negative 4x minus 7x is negative 11x plus 6 equals negative 3. So notice that we're trying to simplify the left side of the equation so it's a little bit easier to solve. So now, again, I want to make sure I get the x term by itself. So this 6 is on the same side with the x term. I need to move the 6 over to the other side of the equation. To be able to do that, I need to subtract 6 on both sides of the equation. So this is the subtraction property of equality again. Negative 11x plus 6 minus 6 equals negative 3 minus 6. So I've subtracted 6 on the left side and subtracted 6 on the right side. So that makes sure that this equation is still equivalent to the previous one. So 6 minus 6 is 0, so this means negative 11x plus 0, so you can leave off the plus 0, equals negative 9. So now, if I have negative 11 times x, how can I get rid of this negative 11? How can I remove this negative 11 in front of the x? Well, think about what we did to remove this 6. We did the opposite. We were adding 6 in the equation. We subtracted 6, so we got 0 which is the additive identity. If I want to make sure I get just 1x, or just x, I need to divide by negative 11 on both sides of the equation. So this implies, so divide the left side by negative 11, you just get x. Divide the right side of the equation by negative 11. Negative 9 divided by negative 11. And so negative 9 divided by negative 11 gives you a positive answer x equals 9 elevenths, positive 9 over 11. Okay, so now check. Check with the original equation whether x equals 9 elevenths is the correct answer. So the original equation was negative 2 times 2x minus 3 outside the parentheses minus 7x equals negative 3. So when you check this, make sure all the x's, each x is replaced with a 9 over 11 in parentheses. So negative 2 times 2 times 9 elevenths minus 3, close parentheses, minus 7 times x, that's 9 over 11, again, and is it equal to negative 3? So let's try this out on the graphing calculator. So let's type this in. Make sure you use the negative button, not the subtraction sign, but the negative button when you type in negative numbers. So negative 2 times 2 parentheses 9 divided by 11 close parentheses subtract so that's not negative 3 it's subtract 3 so subtract button 3 close parentheses minus 7 parentheses 9 divided by 11 close parentheses it should be equal to negative 3 if all this work was correct and it is so this is the correct answer, x equals 9 divided by 11. Okay, number 4. This time it's very similar. This time the variable though is y. It doesn't make any difference when you solve the equation what the variable is. This is using the same steps. So 5 times 3y minus 4 minus 14y equals 25. what should be our very first step in solving this equation? Okay, you should say that we're trying to simplify by using distributive property. So take 5 times 3y and 5 times negative 4. So you get 15y minus 20 minus 14y equals 
25. So 5 times 3y gives you 15y. 5 times negative 4 gives you negative 20. And then you have negative 14y as it is, equals 25. So now notice that there's a 15y and a minus 14y on the same side of the equals. They're both on the left side of the equal sign, so they can be combined. 15y minus 14y is 1y minus 20 equals 25. And so now, how can we get the y by itself? Use the addition property of equality, because you want to add 20 to undo this minus 20. So take the left side of the equation, y minus 20, then add 20 to both sides of the equation. So you'll have y equals, on the left side, 45. So that is the solution to the equation. y must be 45 for this equation to be true. So again, let's check. So we're going to check y equals 45 with the original equation. 5 times 3y minus 4 minus 14y equals 25. Okay, replace all the y's with 45 in parentheses. So 5 times 3 times 45 for the y minus 4, close parentheses, minus 14 times y, which is 45. And is this equal to 25? So again, let's grab the calculator and see if we can actually get the same thing. Okay, so type this in as 5 parentheses, 3 parentheses, 45, minus 4 parentheses, minus 14 parentheses, 45, and we should get 25. And we do. So all this work that we did to solve the equation is correct. So y equals 45 is the solution. Okay, number 5. You have the equation 6 plus 8 equals negative 2x plus 3 plus 3x. So we don't have any distributive property to use because we don't have any grouping symbols where we have multiplication times a sum or a difference. We just have to simplify by combining like terms in this problem. So you have 6 plus 8 on the left side of the equation equals negative 2x plus 3 plus 3x on the right side of the equation. 6 plus 8, those are like terms, so they combine to be 14 equals the right side of the equation has negative 2x and 3x. Those are like terms. So negative 2x plus 3x is 1x. And then there's a plus 3. That's a real number by itself. So how do I get x by itself? I need to subtract 3 on both sides of the equation. So it implies 14 subtract 3 equals x minus or x plus 3 minus 3. So plus 3 minus 3 is 0, so you'll have just x on the right side of the equation. 14 minus 3 is 11. So 11 equals x, or if you want to have the x on the left side of the equation, which it doesn't matter which side it is, you can use the symmetric property of equality. So you can put the x on the left side of the equation, and so x equals 11. Okay, so again, check. x equals 11 with the original equation, 6 plus 8 equals negative 2x plus 3 plus 3x. Replace all the x's with 11 in parentheses. So 6 plus 8, question mark above equals, negative 2 times x is 11, plus 3, plus 3 times x, and again, that's 11, we think. So again, check this. So x equals 11 is the correct solution to this linear equation. Okay, so in these previous five problems, we were adding and subtracting real numbers so that we can isolate the variable by itself. It actually turns out you can add and subtract a term involving a variable to both sides as well to an equation. This means that if you have variables on opposite sides of the equal sign, then you need to either add or subtract to collect all your like terms to the same side of the equation. So that's what we're going to do in example four. Solving linear equations. Solve the following linear equations. So number one, 3x minus 5 equals 2x plus 7. So let's recopy the problem down. 3x minus 5 equals 2x plus 7. Notice that you have variable terms on one side and the other side of the equation. I need to be able to get all the variable terms 
to the same side. So how do I do that? Well, I can move the 2x to the left side, or I can move the 3x to the right side, but I have to get the x terms on the same side together. It doesn't matter which side you move the x terms to. Move them to one side so that they are together. So I'm going to move the 2x to the left side. This is positive 2x. If I want to get 0, I need to subtract 2x. So 2x minus 2x is 0, but make sure you use the addition property of equality, or in this case, it's the subtraction property. So subtract 2x on the left side. 3x minus 2x is 1x. Subtract 5 equals 7. And so now we notice that we're back into a problem that we were doing before. We have x on one side of the equation by itself if we add 5 to both sides of the equation. So add 5 to both sides of the equation. x minus 5 plus 5 equals 7 plus 5. And this means x equals 12. So that is the solution to the equation. x must be 12 for this equation to be true. Okay, number 2. You have 5a subtract 3 times the quantity 2a plus 1 equals negative 1. So what do you think the first step should be? You should be distributing because you have negative 3 times a quantity which is a sum. So let's recopy the problem and use the distributive property to distribute the negative 3 through the parentheses. So negative 3 times 2a and negative 3 times 1. So 5a minus 6 a, so negative 3 times 2a is negative 6a. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 equals negative 1. So now we have the same problem as we had before. You have a's on the same side of the equation. Combine them. They are like terms or similar terms. So this implies 5a minus 6a, that is negative 1a, minus 3 equals negative 1. So now let's add a to the right side of the equation. So if you add a, that will make it positive a on the right side of the equation. So you have negative 3 equals a minus 1. So now isolate the a by itself by adding 1 to both sides of the equation. So negative 3 plus 1, a minus 1, and then add 1. So you'll have a equals negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. So that's the solution. A must be negative 2 for this equation to be true. Okay, number 3. Same idea. We have a 3 times the quantity, 2y plus 4 in parentheses, minus 7y equals 6. So 3 times 2y plus 4 minus 7y equals 6. Use the distributive property first because we want to multiply before we start combining like or similar terms. So 3 times 2y is 6y, 3 times 4 is 12, minus 7y equals 6. Now the y terms are already on the same side, so I can just combine them. 6y minus 7y is negative 1y. So negative 1y, or just negative y, plus 12 equals 6. So let's do the same idea as we had before. Let's move the y to the right side of the equals, so it's positive y rather than negative y. So add y to the left side, so that way you get 0, and then add y on the right side of the equals sign. This way you get 12 equals y plus 6. And now to get y by itself, use the subtraction property. Subtract 6 on both sides of the equation. 12 minus 6 equals y plus 6 minus 6. So it looks like y is by itself now, and it equals 12 minus 6, so 6. So 6 is the solution to this equation. Okay, a couple more. Number 4, 10 equals negative 3y plus 2 times the quantity, 5 plus 2y in parentheses. So the first step should be the same as it was for the last two problems. Distribute the 2 through the parentheses first. So you have 10 equals negative 3y plus 2 times 5 is 10, and then plus 
2 times 2y gives you 4y. Combine like terms. If the variables are on the same side together, and they are, negative 3y plus 4y is positive 1y. So 10 equals positive 1y plus 10. And so now you want to isolate the y, or get the y by itself. Subtract 10 to move the 10 to the other side of the equation. So 10 minus 10 equals y plus 10 minus 10. So y is by itself, and it looks like it's going to be equal to 0. So y equals 0. So that is the solution to this equation. Okay. And then the last problem, why don't you try this one yourself? So number 5, solve this equation, 8 equals negative 2x minus 4 times the quantity, 2 plus x. So try to get the x by itself, and then we'll check our answer afterwards. Okay, number 5. You should have the first step be the distributive property again. So make sure you distribute the negative 4 to the 2 and the x inside the parentheses. So you'll have 8 equals negative 2x minus 8 minus 4x. Now combine your like terms because the x's are already on the same side together. So you'll have 8 equals negative 2x minus 4x is negative 6x minus 8. Now I want to make sure I get the x term by itself. So this minus 8 needs to be moved to the other side, the left side of the equation. So use the addition property of equality. Add 8 to both sides of the equation. So 8 plus 8 equals negative 6x minus 8 plus 8. That way, minus 8 plus 8 will just cancel out. 16 on the left side equals negative 6x. And now, let's use the idea we had earlier in the video. If you want to be able to get x by itself, and you're right now you have negative 6 times x, you need to divide both sides by negative 6. So 16 divided by negative 6 will give you the x by itself. And so if you simplify, 16 and 6 both have a 2 in common. So x equals... 8 divided by negative 3, which is the solution to the equation, negative 8 thirds. So this finishes our video on solving linear equations using the addition property of equality or the subtraction property of equality. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about multiplication property of equality.